Hi, this is Denise. Welcome to my home. I'm kind of late today. Uh, it is almost one o'clock. I wanted to wait until I had some kind of an update for you with Jessica. And I don't really have an update with you for Jessica, but um, she's home. She's still running a really high fever. It got up to 103.7 last night at uh, MedCheck. And thing is, is that when she went a few days ago, they did the testing for COVID and it came back negative, but they treated it. You know, they were believing that it was COVID because it had all of the earmarks of COVID. She tested again yesterday and it was negative and they've tested her for the flu and it's negative for both A and B. So the doctor said, there's no reason for you to be sick. We don't know. We don't know what's going on. Well, God does. And she's miserable. This is day eight of running a fever. And she runs high fevers. When she was little, uh, that's when she started having seizures, is what are called febrile seizures. Um, her fever spikes and lowers very quickly. So, you know, with that, it throws the body into uh, like uh, and it causes seizures well she's kids outgrow febrile seizures but she's had a seizure disorder it's been dormant for some time uh, and I'm trying to encourage her to make sure that she medicates so that she doesn't spike and lower so quickly because um, I'm sure that she's still carries whatever that is that caused her to seize before. Um, she's frustrated. I know that I know that she's going to be all right. It's a long haul for her. Um, and you know, it's really interesting because I had no idea this week what was going on. I didn't even know she was sick until, oh goodness, the middle of the week. She didn't tell me and she'd already been sick for a few days. Um, but what now? What now? What the Lord has shown me with this, and what I'd like to share with you today, is when you've done everything that you know to do, what now? Um, Stand fast in the Lord. Always, always, always stand fast. You know, we need to pray before I start in this. I want to make sure that God guides my mouth. Um, Lord Jesus. Oh, precious Jesus. As we go forward today, Lord, I pray that the words would be there, that you would speak through me that the words would be there, Lord. I don't even know how to pray that. I know that I'm an audience to my own voice so often. I'm so humbled that this would be something that I could do for you. Let my heart be right with you. And let my words speak your truth. Thank you, Jesus. In uh, Ephesians, it talks about rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. When the scriptures repeat, it has to do with not because we're not listening, although a lot of times we don't. Um, it has to do with the, the importance of what's being said. And the word says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Now this is Paul, a letter from Paul. And he's speaking what the Lord has shown him to speak. 
And he's saying, you know, rejoice in all things. No matter what, rejoice comes first. When we pray, we rejoice first. We thank him first. We praise him first. We rejoice in his victories first. Then we go to him in prayer and supplication. I didn't know. I didn't know what supplication meant. I thought it was, well, I thought it had to do with supplying me, you know, and that's part of it. But I looked it up and I'm glad I did because uh, the supplication, the definition for supplication is asking for something humbly, Or, oh gosh, I can't read my own writing. To entreat, to plea, to appeal, to petition, supplication, exhortation, to urge, to pray, vocation, advocation, invocation, request, Beseech, beg, plead. Implant. There's so many different definitions. There's so many different similar words. And supplication, what I'm understanding with supplication is we go to the Lord humbly but we go to him with something in mind. When we pray, it's a much broader spectrum. Uh, supplication is, is asking for something in particular. And we can beg. We can expect. We can plead. But then what? Does he answer right away? Not necessarily. Does he answer the way we want? Not necessarily. Does he answer? Yes. He always, always, always hears us. He always, always, always answers prayer. Um, we don't always know what's best for us. And that's what's really important about us girding ourselves with the armor of God daily to build us to a point where we are asking for the things that are godly. When our minds and hearts are in accord with God, in one accord with God. And he says that we can do this. So I believe him that we can know and it takes preparation. It takes uh, absolute it takes absolute preparation. The armor of God is something that we can put on every day, several times a day if need be. But we're shod with the shoes of preparation of the gospel. So we need to know the gospel. We need to know who Jesus is, why he came, what he's about, and our salvation. The shield of faith. We have an offense with the shield of faith. Our faith is what helps us to stand when what you see doesn't match what you what you know is true it's faith that brings us through that and that's a shield it's an offense to the enemy our faith the sword of the spirit that's an offensive and defensive 
uh, weapon. The Holy Spirit works inside and outside. The Spirit encases us, embraces us, enfolds us, endues us with power, enables us to walk, enables us to stand, enables us to ward off the attacks of the enemy. The Holy Spirit is amazing. He's who Jesus left when, when he left this earth. He left the Spirit with us. Um, I don't know what I'd do without him. And it, it behooves us to go to him. Holy Spirit, show me. Holy Spirit, lift me up. Holy Spirit, protect me. Holy Spirit, show me. Holy Spirit, be there for me. Holy Spirit, help me. The belt of truth. When we gird ourselves with truth, no matter what, you speak the truth. No matter what, you speak the truth. When we walk in the truth, that's our gut is protected with that belt of truth. If we walk in something other than the truth, then we're unbuckling that belt and taking away our protection. If we always speak in truth, then no one can deceive us with a lie. You know, years ago I learned about what happens in the bank. I don't know if they still do this, but <clears throat> the way they teach people about counterfeit money is not counterfeit money. It's learning about the, the real money, to learn all of the nuances, all of the, the little things that real cash has on it so that you can recognize a counterfeit and the same thing goes for god when the enemy can counterfeit everything everything but salvation um he's a pretty crafty dude and we need to protect ourselves from the wiles of the enemy and the belt of truth is part of that protection that's absolutely essential. We need to walk in the truth. The breastplate of righteousness be covered in God's righteousness. That protects our hearts and it protects our uh, spirits. It protects us always from the darts of the enemy, from the things that he might do to, to derail you. When we are diligent about the armor of God, a peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will be ours. You know, to have that peace no matter what it looks like outside, no matter what it appears to be, to understand and really accept that God has us. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's already gone to the end. He wrote the end of the book and he's gone back to walk with us through it. The end of the book, he wins. He's already he's already won. There's nothing for him to win. It's it's us, you know. We need to in our humanity. We need to see God as the victor always. We give Satan too much power. He does have the ability to disrupt us if we're not girded in the armor of God, if we don't have all of our ducks in the row where, where the Lord is concerned. It's so important for us to know that he's given us everything that we need to do to stand 
And he says, you know, when we've when we've donned all this armor and we're ready to stand, then he says, stand. Stand. We must stand. We can hold each other up and stand. We don't fall to our knees to anyone but the Lord ever. Philippians 4 and 8 is another um, coupling verse. I mean, they all go together, don't they? But Philippians 4 and 8, when it talks about all that, all the power that we have in our minds, that we have the ability in our minds to dwell on those things that will give us peace, um, Hebrews. I'm getting there. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. You know, we have a society <clears throat> of children that space out. They leave their minds open to whatever can get in there. We have to take responsibility for our minds to, to fill always our minds with the things of God. If we don't, it leaves a foothold in the door, a foot in the door for the enemy to come in. So it says in Philippians 4 and 8, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. Is there any virtue? Is there anything praiseworthy? Meditate on these things. Find the good. Find the, the silver lining. Always look for the silver lining. There is one, always. Uh, it's so important for us to have that in our lives to be able to not fall into the money molly grumps to see ourselves as victors and to know that we have power over our minds we don't have to think about anything other than what the Lord shows us I've had to eliminate the news I've eliminated most of what's on TV and now I'm, this is me uh, because my humanity gets in the way when I get involved in things like that. I'm aware of public, uh, public events. I'm aware of what's going on in the world. I purposefully don't indulge in the sensationalism. I know what's going on so that I know what to pray for and to pray about. And that's something else that's so important for us to do is to pray for our nation, to pray for our leaders, because truly the way that we will have resolved with the issues that we have in this country are as if our leaders are saved. If they're saved. So let's pray for salvation. Pray for salvation of our country. Pray for salvation of our leaders. Pray for God's wisdom to surpass. It does surpass, but for people to understand and to see that God's wisdom is where we need to be. It's so important. Um, in this same scripture, it talks about
Paul talks about how he's had to be, he was, he was a rich man. And as a believer, he spent a lot of time in prison. And he knows what it's like to be blessed. And he knows what it's like to be abased. And what he found out was that he could rejoice in all things and to be content in all things. If we find contentment where we are, there's no place that the Lord can take us where we won't have that contentment. We don't know what tomorrow holds. And I think as we get older, and maybe it's the times, but I think it's more, for me, as I've walked roads, I've had to walk away from things. I've had to walk away from a lot. And you know, it didn't matter because I had the Lord and I have the Lord and he restores. Remember that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He's our strength. He's our purpose. He's our, our focus. Now, what now? We come together, link arms, and hold each other up. We hold each other accountable. We hold each other up to share our faith, to share our strength, and to share our hope. This channel has given us an opportunity to do that. What now? We go forward. And we experience the peace that God has for us. That's not dependent on circumstances. It's not dependent on whether or not we're well physically. It doesn't matter. His peace prevails. I pray that over Jesse. I pray that over her body. We have such tools to work with as Christians, as followers of Christ. He's given us those tools, not just for us, but for our loved ones, for our families, for those that we don't know, for anyone that we lift up in prayer. It's the way it works. I love you guys. And what now? We move forward and we love each other. And we love God. Until next time. Where am I?